This is Big Daddy here for Big Daddy Forever Podcast, brought to you by, as always, crazyhoodies.com. Crazyhoodies.com, spelled with the Z. Go check it out. Go check out all the merch. Go check out all the hoodies, the wine tumblers for all you alcoholics out there. And trust me, yes, them damn things do go good. They, they, hey, they work as a as a double shot glass very beautifully. <laughs> well. It'd be more than a double shot glass, but you you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Hell, I'm for us tequila drinkers, hell, you can never have enough. <laughs> so go check it out. Crazyhoodies.com, spell with the Z. Let's jump into this, folks. Big Daddy got some shit on his mind. I, I mean, a lot. I <laughs> have you ever woke up one day just done? Done with the bullshit. Done with everybody's bullshit. But most of all, you wake up, you're done with your own bullshit. You get you're tired of, I guess, putting on the fake airs, putting on the, I guess, niceness. Yeah, you're you're done with the niceness. You're done trying to figure things out. You're tr- you're done trying to work together. You're done trying to you're you're done trying to make peace. You're just done with all of it. And then one day you just realize that you don't fit exactly with everyone and that that includes family and friends you don't fit with the crowd and i i know i've talked about this before but today i i just woke up i just woke up done i'm not i'm not talking about i'm gonna kill myself and no bullshit like that i'm done just trying to please everybody else for the last couple of weeks i've been on this healing well for the last couple of years i've been on this healing journey but more so in the last couple of weeks that i've had my chance i've had my chance to not be around certain people i've had my chance to clear my head i've had a chance to just go out in nature think feel and look at you know look at everything i've been looking at you no know, papa duke's ink papa duke's ink is my creation something i created Oh man, back in 2012 when I really was trying to take off with my writing career and it's recently resurfaced after certain things that have been going on with C Plus Studios and other ventures out there. I realized that I want my own shit. I realized that I want to work together with other people. How I'm I'm 50 years old. Now my my mentality has changed. It's it's different from let's say someone in their 20s or 30s. I'm all about coordinated work. Okay. You really do get more, you, you really do get more places, you know, working together as a tribe. If you're trying to build something, then say people have the mentality of being selfish. Nothing wrong with being selfish, folks. You know, because there's certain things in this life that you got to be, you do have to be selfish with. But after look, but me being in radio, you know, that is a coordinated effort. No one ever makes it alone in radio. No one ever makes it alone in the corporate world. In the corporate world, everyone has to have somebody to help them. Sure, you can do as much as you can, you know, doing stuff by yourself. But how far are you going to get? I mean, seriously, how how much how much further are you going to get than being stuck in the rut if you don't have other people to, there to help back you up? So, I just woke. I I did. <laughs> I woke up this morning, just fired up. And angry because no, I'm not where I want to be in my life. No, I haven't been taking appropriate steps because I, I got my feelings and I realized over the last couple of days, Philip stopped being a little fucking baby. And, and that that's that's not putting me down. There's certain things that you have to buck up with in life. There's certain things you have to tough up, toughen up with. And I come from an old Mexican family where you know, you they, they they toughened you up. You know, if you cried, they talked shit about you. If you showed any kind of feelings, they talked shit about you. But I also realized that over the years, that was a detriment to me because that was trauma and I had to take care of that shit. I had to find that there's other ways to handle, you know, I guess generational grief and trauma. And as I work on the stuff that I don't want in my life, I'm finding the person who was always meant to be there. I'm becoming the man I needed when I was younger. And being that man I needed when I was younger, I do need people. Yes, I want people in my life, but I want quality, good people. 
the last couple of years have shown me exactly the kind of people I don't want in my life with people. If we talk about race, there's a lot of people who are no longer my, a lot of my white friends. I'll just say it flat out. A lot of my white friends are no longer in my life because they've shown me their their literal literally their true goddamn colors, and I've showed them mine. So it goes both ways, folks. Don't sit here and think that well, you got white friends, they're racist. No, that's bullshit. You just have different perspectives on what life is. Some folks will say, well, for, you know, black folks generally got the victim mentality. Well. White folks generally have that superior mentality where they think that they're goddamn better than everyone else because they are white. And naturally, when they when other people see black folks, what do they see? Victimhood. They see, oh, they live in the hood. They listen to this. They live in that. But what can you do? After a while, you realize it's not about you, how they feel. It's about them. The only thing you can do, as I've learned over the following years, I can only control how I feel and controlling how I feel means taking back my feelings, my control of my life of how I feel. And <laughs> oh, man, it's, 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 it's a beautiful feeling. I'm not going to lie, folks. It is a beautiful fucking feeling, man. Just having that freedom of choice, having that freedom of saying no. I don't want that. No, I don't want to do that. No, let's not do. Let's not try to do it that way. Let's try it a different way. Last couple of days, I've really looked at my role in C Plus Studios. I really looked at, looked at my role within my own Papa Duke's Inc. And I realized that there's certain things that I do want to do. There's certain things that it's okay to say, hey, yeah, I want to do this because this isn't working. I want to try it this way because what we were doing before was not working. What we were trying to start before was not working. So I decided to go full steam, as you can see, with my own podcast, with my own hoodie shop, because the other ways I was trying just wasn't fucking working for me. I was trying to control my inner misfit. Life is not meant to be, you know, controlled by certain by certain means can we you know can we influence the government no no because the corporations have taken over the government completely we have people who want relig want religion to justify stateship bullshit not me i'm not even religious in the first fucking place and i don't even believe in your god there's this is this universe is too vast too big for anyone to be controlled by a book or by an unseen entity that's been man-made. Yes, I fucking stand by that. I don't give a shit if you unsubscribe to me. Send me the worst hate mail ever. I don't care. I stand by that shit 100%. People don't look at their selves. They don't look at their inner God. They don't look in the mirror and they don't see that God or goddess and realize that they have all the power that they need in their hands to control their lives. That's what you need. That's what you can control. And that's what I'm doing. I'm taking control of my damn life. I'm doing the best I can. And I want to inspire people. Because if I sit back and be selfish, like a lot of people have told me lately, I see that the selfishness works for, for works for them and no apologies given right here. That's how I see them in the first damn place. And they talk about that selfishness. That's how they are in the first damn place. I'm not selfish. I can't be. Vivian Magania, bless her heart. Joe Magania, my grandparents, they didn't fucking raise me that way. They raised me to help my fellow man. The times I have been selfish, though, folks, yes, I was doing some very bad things. And those bad things got me into even worse trouble. So if I'm out of alignment with myself, and I know some of y'all probably think when you say you're a misfit, you're going to do all this stuff. You want to live by your own rules. How can you not stay selfish? Easy. Like I said, I've, I've said, I actually I've said this in past episodes. My karma bubble, folks, is like the size of a fucking dime. <laughs> my, <laughs> I'm not joking. My karma, my karma bubble is shit. And I'm glad it is. The universe has other plans for me. And a lot of people don't realize that when certain things happen in their life, if they try to do bad and if they get caught easily, that's the universe telling them. Bitch, you're not supposed to be this way. 
but you're not listening. We're trying to show you a different way. Let me let me let, let us let us ease you into this. But there's some folks who don't listen. There's some folks who are rats in the maze and they want to keep doing the same thing they're doing, hoping for a different outcome without them realizing or stopping and saying, hey, this there has to be a different way. I'm at that point. There has to be a different way of doing the bot, the podcasting game. And there is. I've been studying that shit. There's a different way of, of getting your product out there. Sure, I've, I'm selling some stuff for crazy hoodies, but I know there's a different way, folks, of getting my name out there. And what I've realized that the podcast game, the marketing game is bigger than your bubble. Let me repeat that one more time for the motherfuckers in the back who are sitting there shaking their damn head. Your bubble ain't shit. Your audience is bigger than your bubble. Case in point, when we first do marketing and sales and stuff like that, let's say, you know, out of high school, a lot of us start doing like It Works or these uh, MLMs, okay? We try to cater to our friends and families first. And of course, yes, they get on, they get all riled up about that and they, they make fun of it. And, you know, because there's those people out there who suck the corporate dick or lick the corporate coochie and they think everything's fine. When it's not, they're in a bigger cell than you are. To those people who do try MLMs, hey, my hat's off to you because that's some rough ass shit. There's very few who succeed and that's just part of your journey. You have to try different things on your journey to finally find what works for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. People are going to judge you. Fuck them. People are going to say shit behind your back. Fuck them. At least you're out there doing it. At least you're trying. Those people who have found their niche, good for you too. Because that takes a skill and a focus that maybe you should try to pass on to others. Instead of being selfish with it and trying to hog all that shit, teach people. To each one, teach one. That's how a village grows. That's how a village becomes strong. Okay? Teach what you know. There's a lot of people I know who don't teach what they know. I mean, well, I went to school for this. Good. Then how much much is your time? Teach me. I'll, I'll be more than happy to pay you, but there's some people who won't because you think they think they're, you're going to take away from them. I can't. I I can't do that no more. I do have the village mentality. I have that in me, that driving me to help others succeed and learn. Only though, as I've learned about myself, if they're willing to share the wealth, and by sharing the wealth, I mean don't be stingy. Don't 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 be stingy with your knowledge. Don't be stingy with with what you know. Don't be stingy. Don't be just a fucking stingy person in general. Don't do it. Cause then I won't help your ass. And yes, there's a lot of things I know. There's and I there's a there's a lot of knowledge I want to pass on. But I also understand that I just realized something. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to pass on what they know because a lot of folks just aren't ready to hear it. You know, find you a tribe that calls you out. Find you some people who ain't going to get on their goddamn feelings and say, well, you know, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I've had too many people in my life do that to me. I have no problem calling people out now because I want people to call me out if I'm fucking up. Seriously. I, I, won't, I won't be mad at them. I'll, I'll hear them. I ain't going to listen to them because listening just means that you're listening to respond. That you're not, you're not paying attention whatsoever to what they're saying. You're not paying attention to the message that they want to hand, that they want to pass on. So a lot of people just listen to respond. Me, I'm gonna fucking hear you. Just like, just like Bob Marley said, "Hear me, baby. Hear what I say." Shit. Good old Bob. <laughs> He's missed. We need him right now. <laughs> anyway, I don't know, folks. I just. I just realized this morning that there's so much I want to give to the world. There's so much I want to give back to people. And there's only so much I can take of bullshit before I reach my limit. And I know some of y'all think, well, is he calling someone? I'm not calling nobody out, folks. I'm not calling nobody out. I'm just speaking my mind because it just, I, I you know, we, we all, we all reach a breaking point. Okay. And I, Everyone reaches a breaking point in their lives where they see shit happening and they see shit not happening. You tell each other things that, hey, yeah, we're going to. No, it's funny because when we're in high school, 
you talk all that shit about, yeah, we're going to be friends forever. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Do you know how many people, so, so-called so friends from high school, I actually talk to? Three. Three people. Even people who I grew up with around here. I will always be friends. We'll always be homies. But like everybody else, I've seen their true colors. They they kind of let they kind of let you know what you think about them after a while. Yes, I'm just as guilty. There's certain people out there I don't want to fucking talk to no more. Why? Because they just weren't good for me. We served our purpose towards each other. There's a difference between a person who's supposed to be in your life for a reason and a season. You have to distinguish which. I'm the type of person, well, I was the type of person up until a couple years ago, I was trying to make lifers out of seasonals. And <laughs> not everyone's going to roll with you the same way. Not everyone's going to vibe with you the same way. Not everyone's going to reciprocate that energy. It's going to be very rare that you find people who share the same common goals, same common energy with you. And that's a beautiful thing when you find them. And you do want to keep them, but that also means a bit of vulnerability with them, a bit of, well, not a bit, a lot of truth speaking. Sure, people are going to get in their feelings. Sure, people are going to get mad. Sure, people are not going to want to move forward after they hear, hear certain things. Hell, I used to be the same damn way, but I'm grateful when they speak their truths. I'm grateful as all hell because I would rather have my tribe that I have now speak the goddamn truth to me than not say anything to you, to me anyway, but <laughs> not to you, not to, not to the audience, but all y'all who are listening, find you a tribe who's going to hear you, find you a tribe who's going to reciprocate the same energy, and it doesn't have to be, well, we're going to go on vacations, we're going to do this, no, build something together, sure, you can have your friendship. But God damn, if you're not going to build something together, if you're not going to be on the same page with trying to move forward in life, that way all of you can eat at the same damn table. But in, in the end, is it really worth it? Yes, I, I hear it all the time. Well, you know, you got to be ready for this. You got to be ready for that. No one is ever fucking ready. Let me repeat that. No one is ever fucking ready. Sometimes you just have to kick down their goddamn door and say, here, here's this. It doesn't matter what kind of mental state they're in. If you present it to them, it's there. What they do with it then or down the road, that's completely up to them. At least you presented it to them. To me, a friend is someone who knows your special song and they're there to sing it to you when you need to hear it. It doesn't, it's not when, you know, well, you're doing this, you're doing that, and she's doing this and he's doing it. No, be a fucking friend. A friend is someone who just, like I said, kicks down the damn door and says, hey, we need to talk. I'm the type of person. I get, I, I, I'm that type of friend. Okay. I'll sit there, but I'll sit there and I'll, I'll fill it out. I'll think about it because I know what words can do. I know words can hurt. So that's why I have to sit back for a minute and stew things over. But we will talk. Trust me. We we, we going to have some damn words. I'll be cool about it. Everyone always talks about, well, you got to be gentle with you. Well, fuck that. Sometimes people just need to hit, look, man, fuck you. You're doing this. You're doing this. Well, you're doing this. Okay, cool. I'm doing that. But what about you? It's okay to get those, but you're doing this, but you're doing this. Well, what about you? It's okay to get it out. Just as long as you get the shit out and you know where each other stand. But talk about it. Be about it. Friendship is a dime a dozen nowadays. It really is. <laughs> Woo! Sorry, I'm, my energy is on fire right now. I'm just like, oh, okay, it's okay, Big Daddy. It's okay, you get, you're getting a little overheated. But folks, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I hope you feel what I'm feeling. I really hope that, you know, that you find your tribe who gets you, who understands you, who loves you enough to say, hey, this isn't working. Can we try something new? And if you get to that point where you feel like you can't try something new, it's okay to walk the fuck away. I'll say it again. It, it oh, here, let me put the microphone right there and I'm gonna stand away. It's fucking okay to walk away. That's for the people in the back. 
Now, let me walk over here and grab my microphone. I just do the son of a bitch down over there by my massage. Oh, now I got to wipe the motherfucker off. It's all greasy and shit. Damn. That looks nasty. <laughs> anyway, folks, you get me. You feel me. Because if you didn't, I wouldn't be talking about this. I wouldn't be coming at you. I wouldn't be coming at you in this way. Y'all feel me. And that's why I love y'all. But seriously, find you a tribe that works. Don't be gentle with yourself, especially if you know you got some things you got to work on. Always work on yourself. I, <laughs> I I don't know how many people have read The Four Agreements. I read that book religiously because it's, it's a nice reminder of where I've gone, where I want to go, where I don't want to go, where I want to be. You know, it's 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 all it's all matter of perspective about your life, about what you want. And you have every right. You have every right to say where you want your life to go. You really do. Selfishness works for certain certain people. Being of service works for certain people. Selfishness and being of service works for certain people. It all depends on what you have on the inside, but it also depends on what you don't want in your life anymore. Here's a little quote from Don Miguel Ruiz. You don't need to learn how to love yourself. You need to unlearn all the reasons why you reject yourself and by nature, love yourself. When I seen this on my homegirl, Laurel Stevens, love her to death. That's that's that that's my baby girl right there. From now, she's my family. She my she my she my road dog. Her her and her husband Buzz, we love them both. When she did some shaman healing on me a couple years ago, I was in a fucked up place. I was a mess. I <laughs> I was done. I really was. I was done. But she helped pull my head out of my ass. She's she really came. She really came. In the time when I needed for someone to really like just slap me in the back of my damn head, look, here's a different way. For all those who are listening, please, 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 there's always someone there who's trying to help you show you a different way. Get the fuck out of your own way. Let them do it. Let them show you whether you're ready or not. As long as they are there to help you and show you, you can try it this way. The rest is up to you. It's all up to you. And this quote by Don, when I, <laughs> oh man, I'm going to read it again. You don't need to learn how to love yourself. You need to unlearn all of the reasons why you reject yourself and by nature, love your, by nature, love yourself. Sorry, I kind of got a little choked up there. That part right there, you need to unlearn all of the reasons why you reject yourself. That's what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Hell, I last couple of months. Bullshit. The last couple of years, I've learned my strengths. I've learned my weaknesses. I've learned that, yes, I have always been one of the black sheeps of the family. Yes, I've always been one of the misfits. I've always was one of those kids that people just want to knock the shit out of because, yeah, in many ways, I was a fucking brat I, because I, I wanted attention. I wanted eyes on me. But as I grew older, as I spent more time by myself getting to learn the ways of uh, Bushido, when I learned about Miyamoto Masashi, the samurai, you no know, African warriors, the, 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 the Hakuar down in, down in Mexico, all the different warrior tribes, I realized that was in me. I am, I've always been a fighter by nature. I'm a fighter at heart, but at the same time, Grandma Vivian showed me how to heal. She showed me how to love. She showed me that, yes, you can be a badass, but you can also learn to give someone a goddamn hug. Both work. And they're both just as important. And it's been in the last couple of years, hell, lie. In the last couple of weeks, honestly, I've really, really, really taken all these lessons to heart. I'm getting out of survival mode. I'm getting to prosperity mode. And there's so many people nowadays with the way the world's going, this economy and shit that's happening. Yeah, we do get in survival mode, folks, but you ain't got to stay there. Don't stay there. Get in the prosperity mode. You deserve it. Even when people say, well, I've heard people say, well, I, I don't want to be rich like that. I don't want all that money just as long as I'm happy. Bullshit. I want to be fucking rich. I want to be a multimillionaire and I'm going to be one. I want money so I can take care of my family. I want money so I can help people with their projects, you know, especially with comic books, especially with writing. I want to help support people the way I was never supported. That's why I want to be rich. 
Seriously, I want to be. I want to make so much goddamn money that's enough for me that I can help people with their dreams. And I want to show people what I do in order to help them. Like I said, village mentality. No fucks given. I don't regret that shit. And I stand by it 100%. So it's a beautiful thing, folks. Thank you for letting me be vulnerable with you. Seriously, thank you for listening. Thank you for, for all those who do listen. You know, especially my boy Penta and JP the Wicked Ninja. I heard that you guys listen a lot. Thank you. That means the world to me. C Plus Studios always listens. Other people always listen. But it's those few who really do sit there and pay attention to what I say. That's what matters the most to me right now. Because I know, you know, you, we, we've talked. <laughs> sure, family and friends, they don't listen to my podcast as much. But like I said, my audience is bigger than my bubble. And to all my worldwide audience, those who will eventually listen to this because it's going to happen. Thank you. And with that being said, what time is it? Oh, shit. It's time for me to pack this up, wrap this up. I got to get to work. I got to go throw some healing bombs on people. It's time for me. I guess it's time for me to do something I do best, even though I know the massage game ain't going to last forever for me because my hands are already kind of given out due to old past injuries, boxing, punching shit, being stupid. You know, that's why I'm working on these side projects. That's why I'm eventually, well, stay tuned. You'll see soon. All right, folks, I'm out. Love you. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Go have a fucking adventure. Get your ass out the house. Go have a goddamn adventure. I don't give a damn what's going on in the world. Hell, what's going on in the world should have no outcome on you getting outside and having some goddamn fresh air. Go get some sunshine. Big old handful of sunshine. Rub it on your face. Hell, rub some on your nuts and your ass. You got a hoo-hoo shit. Rub it down there, too. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> folks, I love you. Stay tuned. Got more announcements coming down the pipe. And as always, mwah, peace.